Dispenser going up. Well, I guess that'll do. So competitive matchmaking is finally here. Well, kind of. The beta's here. The important fact is we can finally test using all the classes in a 6's competitive environment. I'm Anti-Dane, and I like to spell my name kind of funny, and today I'm going to be showing you how to play Engineer in the new competitive environment 6's. For a very long time, 6's had been played with a very stale meta of two scouts, two soldiers, a demo, and a medic. Matchmaking completely removes class locks, meaning it's finally becoming viable to play off classes like these, which have unlockable weapons, which can make it very possible to play in 6's. I will be using this opportunity to be playing a lot of Engineer because it is my most played class in Team Fortress 2. Well, top 5. Engineer at his base is not a very viable class for 6's, but when you take into account all the unlocks he's gotten over the years and the multiple ways you can play him, it becomes more than reasonable that he will have a place on the battlefield. But enough of the talking, let's jump right into it. The medic's role in competitive is to heal people and use uber charge. But what happens if you take one of these things away? The Pompson is what happens. Or as I like to call it, the damn son, that wasn't very nice. The Pompson shoots a projectile which makes medics lose up to 10% of their medigun charge and makes spies lose up to 20% of their cloak. It says up to these numbers because after a certain range it will start draining less and less. This number is roughly 512 hammer units where it will start lowering. But if you don't know what a hammer unit is, I don't blame you. A hammer unit is basically 1 16th of a foot, or for our convenience, 1.904 centimeters. Times this number by 512, and you get roughly 32 feet. So basically after 32-ish feet, it's going to start draining less than 10%. And after about 96 feet, it's not going to drain at all. This means you need to get really close if you want to be draining uber charge. But what if you don't care about uber charge? My good buddy Kevin made a couple videos talking about the Pompson, which I will link to in the description, specifically about an exploit which allows you to make the Pompson projectiles invisible by shooting through buildings. It's admittedly a very gimmicky strat, but if you can put a dispenser in a very open wide place on a map, you're free to make invisible shots that they're not going to be able to dodge because they don't know where the shots are going. This includes both being able to drain medic uber charge and just getting nice damage shots. You're probably saying, that's all well and good, Dane, but why would I choose this over the Frontier Justice or even the Rescue Ranger? And to that I have to say, I don't know. I think I'm just an asshole. When playing Engineer and Matchmaking, you're going to be facing a lot of adversity. People don't want you to play this class for whatever reason. It's important to not get mad about this. All you have to do is stay calm and remember that you're smarter than them. You have 11 hard science PhDs. You don't have to deal with these idiots bullshit. You know better than them. And that brings us to our next section. Don't build teleporters. They don't exist. Teleporters are a myth created by bad players who want a crutch to try and better play the game. It's important to remember that that's not important specifically to you. So let them run, they need the exercise. Overextending is a core element to Engineer's gameplay. It's extremely beneficial when you can get behind enemy lines, build the teleporter, and then use it to keep getting behind- Wait, I told you to not build the teleporter. We're going to answer the age-old question of level 3 or mini sentry. The answer is mini sentry. You're done, you can go home. Matchmaking is primarily 5 CP and king of the hill, at least it is right now. In both game modes, you're going to be very actively trying to push, meaning it's really difficult to maintain a level 3, or even a level 2 for that matter. So in most basic scenarios, it's just easier to throw down a mini sentry. The exception would be if you're on 5 CP holding last, or maybe if you have a really solid hold on king of the hill, but otherwise it's generally easier to just use a mini sentry. A lot of players seem to have an insatiable fear of mini sentries, meaning if they see one, it's all they can focus. So it also serves as a great distraction for your team to play around. Likewise, if you die, a level 3 will be targeted very quickly, but a mini sentry will probably be able to pick off a couple damage before it goes down. In the end, it's all situational which one will work better, but in most instances, a mini sentry will serve your team more use. It allows you to move more quickly, it allows you to focus on your dispenser, it allows you to focus on helping teammates, the list goes on. Since I've already covered the primary and melee, I might as well cover the secondary too. My choice of secondary would be the short circuit and oh shit, I'm noticing a pattern. Left clicking with the short circuit will use up 5 of your ammo to do a bit of damage and that's about it. But alt firing or right clicking with the short circuit will take away 15 of your ammo and destroy any projectile it touches. This includes any projectile in the game, excluding Pompson and Righteous Bison shots, which aren't technically projectiles. Matchmaking is the supreme mode for soldiers and demo man, so why would you not use a weapon that allows you to basically shut them down? 
You could also ask why you wouldn't want to use a weapon that allows you to extend your sentry range to be virtually unlimited, but I mean... <laughs> nah. The final step of playing engineer and matchmaking is to please don't be total aids to your team. Or the other team for that matter. The amount of people I see playing MM who type EZ at the end of the game. People who get into fights with their own teammates? In a cooperative game mode? People who don't talk to their team at all? Don't even have voice chat enabled? Don't be that guy. That's the greatest advice I can give you. Do not be aids in matchmaking. Oh, and also be sure to abandon whenever your team is losing. Unplug your router, that way you won't lose any elo. Completely cancel your internet service, because if you're somebody who abandons matches, you shouldn't be playing the game anyways. Hopefully nobody takes the advice I've given you today too seriously. I did do the homework and fact checking on a lot of what I talked about, but realistically, this is not the most ideal way to play Engineer. Or maybe it is. Maybe I somehow actually found the formula. If you haven't caught on yet, this entire video is basically parodying Uncle Dane, who's a real total fucking cutie. You should check him out. Or stay with me, and don't give him any attention. I'm fine with that too. But whatever you do, I hope you enjoy matchmaking. I know I will. Even though I'm probably not going to be playing that much Engineer. I'll be playing other classes, and I will be enjoying matchmaking. That's it for this video. I've got nothing else I need to add to this. So I will talk to you nieces and nephews next time. Have a good day. Yeah, I mean, the video is not, it's not bad. It's not good, but it's not bad, you know, it's, you know, I, 4 out of 10.